Realtors need to understand the business of investing. I'm Maud Leger, and this is the Realtors Conspiracy Podcast, where we crack the code to real estate success. Learn from top realtors, entrepreneurs, and innovators about how to grow your business as we discuss real estate success stories, mindset, processes, and the key to their success. Check out our podcast episodes every Monday to crack the code to success for your real estate business. This week, I'm speaking with Dustin Heiner, real estate investor. Whether you are a realtor helping your clients build their real estate investment portfolio or wanting to create your own, this episode is for you. Dustin shares tips and tricks for investors on how to understand what it's like to be mastering passive income, working with investors, and how to build a real estate investing business. He explains how to work the numbers, how to find deals, and many different ways to buy and fund them. Find out for yourself how to get more out of real estate. Let's get to my chat with Dustin. Hi, Dustin. Tell us, how are you successfully unemployed? Hey, Mo. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I, I just love helping people see how they can quit their jobs by investing in real estate. Yeah, so I became successfully unemployed. Um, and my goal was to not work for other people. That's how I became successfully unemployed. So what I did was I kept buying rental property after rental property. Back in 2006, I started investing in real estate. And I realized that I could um, basically make money without working and with passive income by owning real estate. So right then and there, sitting there, I said, no longer am I ever going to tell anybody. If they asked me, Dustin, what do you do? I would normally say, I work for the county government. I do IT work for the county government. I'm never going to say that. I'm going to say I am an investor because I bought one, maybe two properties at the time. And this was back in 2006, 2007, 2008, when the, you know, the crash back then. Yeah. And as I was sitting there, I said, I'm going to now be an investor because that's the way that I can actually get out of working for somebody else. So as I go and work in this new department, great department, but I'm working there for another five or six years, I'm buying property after property after property. And each one of them made me a minimum of $250 a month in passive income. That's where I don't work and I make money. And then after 30 plus properties, I went to my new boss, good boss and everything, but I gave him a two weeks notice. I said, I'm laying you off. It didn't, wasn't that crass, but I, I said, hey, I'm done. And the boss said, what are you going to do? I said, I don't need to do anything. I invest in rental properties and I literally just make money without working. Nice. Very cool. I love it. What a crazy story <laughs> to go through all of that. And then you started buying properties before and then you built a career through that. So how did you quit your job with rental properties? Like what was your process? So I bought one property that made me $250 or more in passive income. And if you realize that per year is $3,000 passive income. I don't work and I make money. But if I had 10 properties that made me $250 a month, that's $2,500 a month. That's $30,000 a year. If I had 20 properties, I just started scaling this up in my head. If I had 20 properties, that would be $5,000 a month, $60,000 a year without working. I guarantee most people be able to pretty much almost quit if they made $60,000 a year in their pocket from passive income. And so as I just bought property after property, I saved every bit of money that I got from every single property so that I could put it into the next property. I saved everything from there, bought the next property. After 30 plus properties, I realized that I was 37 years old. I was like, man, why am I working anymore? I, I, I need to quit. So I quit because I realized even though I was making $75,000 a year working for my job, I was wasting my time when I can make so much more money. I was losing money working that job because I realized if I put all my time and effort into building my business, my real estate investing business, I can keep growing. Now I have 30 plus properties and I literally don't need to work. So that's how you scale it up. You buy property after property, save that money to buy the next property. Hmm, very cool. And how do you work with realtors doing that? You said you love working with realtors. <laughs> I absolutely love working with realtors. In fact, I invest all over the country. My students also invest all over the country. And so any realtor will realize this. I am living, now I live in Arizona. I used to live in California. Now I live in Arizona. And I still buy properties all over the country. My students, we buy properties all over the country. But what we love is utilizing experts on the ground. Now, I'm not an expert, even in the areas that I have 20 properties, 30 properties or 100 properties, whatever. I'm not the expert. 
my property managers are the experts. My inspectors, my realtors, all of these people are the experts. Now, what I look for, so to give anybody any tips on how to work with investors like me, because I buy lots and lots of properties. My students buy lots and lots of properties off of realtors, which is a huge, a huge influx of deals. Yeah. yeah. And so let me give you a few tips because what I found is that it's hard to find a good realtor that is going to help us as investors. Now, we know there are lots and lots of realtors, but in order to work with investors like me and like my students who buy lots of properties, realtors need to be able to understand what it's like. So everything I just explained about making passive income, making sure that you build the business first, finding the right people, which I can explain that if you want me to, Mode, we can do that. But um, I want to make sure that I'm making money in my business. I'm not buying this because, oh, look at the, the uh, you know, the carpet's really, really nice. Look at the, you know, the outside looks great. There's good drapes and good curtains and all that. I don't care about that stuff. I care about how much money this property can make me. So realtors need to understand the business of investing. So how can you guide realtors into finding you the right properties then? So the biggest way I could do this is helping you understand how I think and how other investors think. So okay. remember when I talked about building the business first, yes. you build the business first by finding the right experts in that area. Like I invest in Ohio, Texas, and Arizona. I have students invest literally all over the country, but we don't fly there. We don't want to go there. We want to hire the right people. So the realtors, they are, they're basically like, if you think about football, they're like our running backs or our wide receivers. They're going out and they're trying to score for us, which is fantastic. We have that. Now our business, we have a quarterback. Our quarterback is our property manager. They're the ones that make sure that we make money or score every time. So right. realtors, what they need to do is understand how expenses and income work in my business because I shoot for passive income. Remember, the minimum is $250. That's the minimum that we need to make in passive income. So here is quickly, very, very simple way to do this. It's easy. It's just addition and subtraction. We add up all of our expenses. That would be our mortgage, our taxes, our insurance, our property management fees. We add up all those expenses and then we get a total. That's our expense for that property per month. From there, we figure out how much we could rent the property for. I don't know how much I could rent the property for. Zillow definitely doesn't know how much I could rent the property for. I know they, they're not good at numbers. So that's why I hire realtor, realtors as well as property managers who tell me how much it could rent for. So he gave me an example. I add up all my expenses per month. It adds to $1,000 a month is all the expenses. That's everything included. Then the property manager or the realtor tells me you could rent it for $1,300. I'm like, well, great. I have $1,000 expenses, but I have $1,300 I could rent it for. That $300, that's the difference. That's passive income. So you need to understand how to calculate all those expenses. Now, I will say this one thing that's really, really interesting. People need to get this. I don't pay my taxes. I don't pay my insurance. I don't pay my mortgage. I don't even pay my property managers. I don't pay any of that stuff. I have my tenants pay those things. Now, it so happens the money flows through me and I pay all that stuff, but I don't work a job to pay for my property manager. I don't work a job to pay for the mortgage. I make sure the tenants pay for all that and everything else on top of that. So even just having a property manager, I need to make sure that is included in my expenses. I'm not going to buy a house and, and in buying the house, have to manage it myself. I want to pay other people just like I want good realtors to understand hey, Dustin wants passive income. Let me calculate all these expenses. Let me see what the price of the house is worth, all that sort of stuff to help me and bring really, really good deals to me. And then how do you, what's your minimum? Like you said, 300 would be a good, like from 1,000 to 1,300. What would be the minimum extra that you would calculate that would be a good deal for you? So we don't buy, or at least I, the way I do it, as well as teach my students, we don't buy properties unless it makes us $250 or more. And I'll give you a reason why. A lot of people might say, well, why don't you just do $100? $100 a month in passive income is good. It's like, yes, I get that. That is really good. But in one year, that's only $1,200 in passive income. Let's say you have a furnace go out. That's going to be $4,000 probably, may, eh, depending on where you're at, but it could be three to $4,000. That eats up all your passive income and your reserves. How are you going to feed your family? So with $250 a month at the bare minimum, 
Now we're going to have to work the, the price down. We're going to, as investors, what we do, we make sure we work the price down. So if they're asking, let's say $150,000, we're going to try to get them down to, let's say 125, 130. So what we do is we make sure that we account for everything going into it to make sure that we make $250 as the minimum. That's $3,000 a year in passive income. If there's a furnace goes out, well, then we can go ahead and pay for that. That helps us. That, that's a big buffer along the way. Now, people might be saying, well, Dustin, right now the market is crazy. How do you find properties that make $250 a month in passive income? I'll we'll say number one, absolutely. It's harder to find those. Now, back in 2010, it was easy. In fact, I didn't have enough money to buy all the properties that I wanted to buy. It was so easy. Now it's harder to do that. But here's the thing. As investors, we make money in six different ways. So number one, we make money in passive income. I just talked about that. There's, we make money in regular market appreciation. We know markets just go up and that's how we make money. We make money in forced appreciation. Forced appreciation, basically you fix it up, you make it worth more. So it's worth more. Another one is equity capture. You guys definitely understand this. We're gonna, let's say it's worth 150, but we buy it for, let's say 125. That's $25,000 in equity that we just captured when we bought the property. The other two are tax advantages. Depreciation is amazing. Saving so much money in taxes. Like that, that one thing alone is amazing. But then also mortgage buy down. This is the six ways. Other one was mortgage buy down. The tenants pay for every bit of the mortgage, principal, interest, taxes, insurance. So let's say you buy a house, you put, I don't know, $20,000 down. The tenant pays the rest of that all the rest of that uh, principal and interest as well. So that's what we do is we shoot for $250 a month. It's harder to do, but at the same time, we capture equity, which helps us to get that. You would understand this mode. If we put the purchase price down, our mortgage goes down, which means our passive income goes up because we have less in expenses. Does that all make sense? Definitely, yeah. And then how do you get your down payments as you're starting? If you're just a brand new investor, where do you get it? How do you leverage that? That's that. Yes. I love that question because a, a lot of people that come to me, they're starting out with either very little money or they've never invested. And so that's always the biggest question is how do we find deals and how do we pay for them? Obviously. Now the down payment is something that we can work with. In fact, money to buy a property in a down payment and a mortgage, that's just one way to actually buy a house. In fact, a lot of people think we find a mortgage a mortgage uh, broker and a realtor, we put them together, we buy a house. That's just one way. Meaning we don't need to actually just use mortgages. We can use private money. We could use hard money. We could use signature loans. We can use seller financing. We can even use, and I've done this, it's an advanced strategy. I've used a credit card to buy properties and I still made money even though I was paying, making those credit card payments. So that's thinking about how much money you need. I'll tell, I'll tell you this. I don't take on any students and one-on-one -on -one coaching unless they have $10,000 or more. Now, the reason why is it's hard to buy properties with low and no money down, like $0 down. It's hard to do that. It's a lot more work. What I suggest, if you have $10,000, and a lot of us, we can work extra harder. We can maybe get a second job. We can save, you know, like don't go to Starbucks for, for a while, save up $10,000. If you can do that, there are great places all over the country that we can use that $10,000 to buy a our first rental property. Now, what probably might be a, $60,000 house, which yes, unless you're living on the coast, you wouldn't understand this, but there are $60,000 houses. There are $50,000 houses all over the country. Like Midwest is really, really good. But if you use that $10,000, we can buy a house. We can also use other types of financing. I know, like I teach my students at least 15 different ways to get financing to buy the properties. Getting a down payment is just one of them. Nice. Well, that blows me away because in our market, the prices for $60,000, you... <laughs> You don't get a shed. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I agree. And that's the thing that I love helping all my students to understand is that when you're investing out of state, like I lived in California when I first started, I had to figure this out as I went. And as I figured out, I created this system. I said, oh, this is, as long as we build the business and we make sure our, our tenants are going to be paying all of our expenses, we're going to be fine. And oh, time after time, it's proven. And as I've taught students, it's proven out. Now, if I, so I live in Arizona currently, but Right now, Arizona is just a hot market. It's just, it, it's appreciated the last year, like 20, maybe 25%, which is ridiculous. It's just going up, but I don't invest here. I invest in other states. I invest in out of state, but at the same time, I make sure, because people always wonder, oh, how do you worry about like, you know, the 2 a.m. calls? How do you worry about this, that, and the other? I'm like, I don't. You have your property manager. I don't manager. worry about this stuff. I have, exactly, Mode. I have my property managers. They're the ones, and remember, I'm not paying for them. 
I'm not taking money out of my pocket to pay for them. The tenants are paying for them. I've already accounted for the expense before I buy the property. They are the ones that receive those calls at 2 a.m. and they take care of that. I, I love being able to teach students how to invest out of state because they don't realize that they can. And there are a lot of great properties all over the country. I love it. That's amazing. Tell us about your real estate course. How does it go? Uh, what's covered? What did we learn there? Oh, yeah. So I actually have, and I'm, I'm glad you asked because I have a free course. I literally just want people to understand this. So I bought so many properties. I quit when I was 37 years old. And I was like, you know what? I need to do something with my time. And it's a blessing to be able to give back. So I have a real estate investing course absolutely for free. I'll go ahead and give it to you. So if you text the word rental, R E N T A L, to 33777. Rental to 33777. I'll literally just send it to you, but it's going to show you how to find an area of the country to invest, how to build the business first, how to make sure you're accounting for all the numbers, how to make sure that you are making sure you have the right property managers, realtors, as well as um, inspectors, plumbers, and then buy that first property. And on top of that, scale the business to where you can eventually not have to worry about working and then do whatever you want. And because you have extra time in your life, if you want to just, you know, you want to be a realtor because you have extra time, go ahead and do that. Literally everything's there for you. So it's, I have had so many students become like literally hundreds of students become successful investors. You can even go to masterpassiveincome.com forward slash free course, get it there as well. I just want to help as many people as possible. Just get all that stuff for free and just get started. Yeah. That's amazing. Best time to buy real estate is now, right? One hundred percent. Well, no, I would say that's the second time. The best time was twenty years ago. Yes. The second best time is literally right now. And what I'm telling a lot of people who are asking me, well, Dustin, what's gonna, you know, what happens if the market crashes? Like, well, we don't know if it's gonna crash or even when. I thought back in 2017 something's gonna happen, but nothing did. And so if I would have stopped coaching people in 2017, I would have so many students that would literally not be where they are today and quitting their jobs because they have so much real estate. So. The second best time is literally today. Make that decision. And it took me losing my job and realizing nothing's guaranteed. Let yeah. me go ahead and build it so I am going to be independent. That's amazing. Super inspiring. I love it. Thank you, Mo. Thank you. Thanks for joining. Subscribe to our podcast, Realtors Conspiracy, today. Today.